John, the fourth chapter and the 18th verse. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. I want you to see something with me today. The greatest trouble with the world today is constant fear. People are afraid. They're afraid they're not going to hold out to the end. They're afraid that they're going to get sick and die with the cancer. They're afraid that maybe if the children go away someplace, that they're not going to get back without having a terrible accident or being hurt or killed. And some people live in constant fear, worry, 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 worry. And if you have worry, you don't have faith. And if you have faith, you don't worry. I said you don't worry. Worry isn't faith. And faith isn't worry. When you have faith in God, Worry has to take its flight. Fear cannot stay in the same place with Jesus Christ. Fear is torment. If you're afraid and you fear, a lot of you lay down on your beds at night to go to sleep and you're afraid your heart's going to stop before morning. You break out in a cold sweat. The devil comes along and says, sure enough, you're going to die. You think, oh, God, is it possible am I going to die? devil say, sure. Then you'll think, well, I'm not right with God. The devil say, of course you're not right with God. You're not even saved. Have you ever heard him talk? Then you think, my God, you suppose I'm not saved? Then you'll get out of your bed and try to pray. The devil say, there's no use you praying. You've sent away your day of grace. God won't hear you pray. God's forsaken you. You can't touch God anymore. Have you ever heard the devil tell you that God had withdrew his spirit from you and that no longer you could touch God. You've heard him talk. I've seen people, and at one time I saw my wife so full of fear that she'd walk the floors at night and couldn't sleep. All the time the devil had her scared that her life was going to be taken away from her. And all the time the devil told her of all of her shortcomings and how she'd failed God. And she lived in constant fear, afraid. Some people are all the time condemning themselves. The reason they can't get a blessing from God is because they're in their heart and they condemn themselves. They say, I'm not right with God. I have to live like I should live. I feel God. Of course, you've failed God. I feel God. There's none perfect in this flesh. Only Him inside of you makes you perfect. And God don't look at you and God don't look at the sins that I commit. God whether we got the blood covering our soul or not. If we're walking in the light with God and we're walking in the fullness of God's love, the blood of Jesus Christ is continually taking that sin away. And you have no sin in the eyes of God. But you know we condemn ourselves. They come along and say, when we're getting a blessing, you'll come for a year and say, you're not entitled to that blessing. Why? Don't you remember what you did last month? Don't you remember what you did last year? Don't you remember what you did last week? And then we think, oh my, I did do that last week. I did do that last year. I'm not entitled to this blessing. I, I'm a sinner. But God said he put your sins as far as the east is from the west. And God said, I won't even remember them against you anymore. If he's not thinking of them, what in the world are you doing thinking of? If God's forgot them, what are you digging up all the past for? If God buried your sins and put them as far as the east is from the west, what are you digging up all them old past sins for and bringing them up before yourself? My Bible said if your heart condemns you, God is your heart. How many believe that? God's greater than them things that you've committed. Somebody said, well, Brother Cole, what do you do? When the devil comes along and drags up every past sin that I've had and begins to tell me that I'm not entitled to a blessing, he'll say, don't you remember what you did last month, Jack Cole? I say to the devil, no, I don't remember. He said, you're lying. No, I'm not lying. If God's forgotten, I've forgotten. If it's 
under the blood, God no longer holds it against me. If Jesus has forgiven me, what do I have to drag up anything that happened tomorrow? I can't do anything about what I've done tomorrow. I mean, yesterday. All I can do is live for tomorrow. I can't be responsible for all my sins yesterday and the day before yesterday and the day before that. I can't be responsible for what I've done away back in sin. God said he forgave them and forgot them. He said he put them in the bottom of the sea. And he hung up a sign and said, no fishing now. You believe that? A lot of you have gone back and tried to fish up your old sins again. And you condemn yourself. And then the devil says at night to you, you're not ready to meet God. Why? Then he drags up all your sins and throws them before you. You say, well, that's right. The devil will say, you talked about something. You did this two weeks ago. You did that a month ago. And you'll worry and you'll fret and you'll stew. Then the devil will tell you you send away your day of grace. God won't even hear you. And then you'll get out on your knees and try to pray and break out with cold sweat and you can't touch God and the heavens is brass, and you'll never touch God. You know why? Because you got fear in your heart. And if you got fear in your heart, you can't touch God with fear in your heart. If you worry, you don't have faith. And if you have faith, you don't worry. Shall I say that again? I said if you worry, you don't have faith. And if you've got faith, you don't worry. Because perfect love casts out fear. And you could rest in the arms of Jesus. My Bible said that if you have fear, your love hasn't been made perfect yet. But oh, thank God, when your love is made perfect in Him, I don't care what happens. I don't care if you've got a cancer or a tumor. I don't care if your eyes are blind. I don't care if your legs are crippled. You can raise your hands and praise God. And say, Lord, I know you're going to deliver me sitting in the wheelchair out there. You're constantly condemning yourself for what you've done before you got hurt. You live in the past. If you'll take everything and put it under the blood and forget about what you've done in the past because you can't do anything about the past and begin to rejoice God for the future, God will completely heal you and deliver you out of that wheelchair. Faith. God said, faith is a grain of mustard. Did you move a mountain? Amen. If you can move a mountain, I don't believe Jesus cast mountains into the Mediterranean and into the Sea of Galilee, but I believe he cast old waters away from people and old lame legs away from people and cancers away from people and blind eyes away from people never to return again. And if you've got just a little bit of faith as a grain of mustard seed and begin to praise God, that faith will mount up and up and up and up until fear won't be able to stay in your heart and fear will have to take its flight and then the fullness of the power of God will take over and you'll be completely delivered of every sickness that's in your body. It's him that's a healer. It's not Jack Colbert, it's Jesus Christ. When I laid in a hospital bed dying with tropical malaria, I weighed 134 pounds. Doctors had gave me up. My heart was filled with constant fear. But you know, one day Jesus walked into the house trailer where I was after being discharged from the army and they said I'd never live. After doctors had given me up and my wife had came and stood by my bed and said, Jack, if I was you, I'd go back to the veterans hospital. Maybe they could do something for you. My spleen and my liver was swole. I laid in bed and bit my tongue until blood run down the corners of my mouth trying to keep back the pain inside of me. But when I got to the place in Jesus, when I said, Lord, live or die, sink or swim, though you slay me, I will trust you, Lord. I'll then come forth like gold because I know that you still live because I feel you in my soul. That old fear left my heart and the presence of Jesus walked into that trailer and laid his hand upon me and I was completely delivered of every of that tropical malaria, Jesus completely healed me and took my sicknesses away. Fear will take its flight when faith and Christ walks in. Do you believe that? So, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise him. Praise him, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 
I want you to come up here and see where that thing was, how God took it off. Come on. Come on. To the left there, but just the sky where it was. See there? There it is. There's pieces of it in my hand. and praise God together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, you can go back and sit down now if you want. Raise your hands and praise God. Go on and praise Him, sister. God's healed you. Raise your hands and praise God together. I said raise your About three weeks. Show me right where it is. Right your back. Right behind him. Right there. Right where your kidneys is. Yeah. We've got to heal that old back. Yes, I know you. And every bit of the sore, yes. the pain, and the stiffness. Everything, yes, I believe. You belong to the Baptist Church? Yes, sir. Get ready. I have seen that God takes it out of here. make people bend over and why do you put their knee in their back if they got a stiff back to show you that God's delivered it. somebody said suppose they was to die yeah but suppose they don't somebody said well suppose you hurt them suppose they don't I don't do it to any of them that's liable to get hurt amen because they don't have faith in God I only do it to the ones God tells me to how many believe when God tells me somebody's healed, I can do anything I want to do? Raise your hands and praise Him together. I said praise Him together. Hallelujah. God heal this old dead colon. God heal these eyes. Heal this sinus trouble, Lord, for Jesus' sake. God make this sister whole right now, Lord, in thy name. Amen. You haven't got anything now praise Him for. Do you love the Lord? Say amen. Take your glasses off. How long have you had these old cross eyes? Since birth. Since birth. Yes. Well, get ready for it to go straight now. you believe it? Yes, sir, I believe it. The Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, these eyes have been crossed since this girl was born. God, I believe your word right now. God, straighten these eyes completely straight in the name of Jesus. Hand me a mirror, will you? Lord, for thy glory right now. Now look at him. <laughs> what do you make of that? Now turn around and show them. Raise your hands and praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Well, what will it take to make you shout? Did you get a good picture of her eyes? Raise 
raise your hands and praise God together. I said raise your hands and praise God together. Feel too, just like you saw people during this television program when I laid my hands upon them and God made them whole. It was only by the power of God. I'm not a healer. I never claimed to be a healer. I believe there's one healer, and his name's Jesus. But I can pray the prayer of faith along with you that will set you free from sickness and suffering. If you've tried everything else, try Jesus one time and see what he'll do for you. To all of you at Radio Land who will write me a letter and tell me to pray for you, I'm going to send you one of these handkerchiefs that I prayed over and anointed and believed God with you over. The Bible said they brought handkerchiefs and aprons unto Paul. When they were carried to the sick, the sick was made well. Jesus can make you well by the anointed handkerchief. Not the handkerchief itself, but the prayer of faith that goes forward with the handkerchief. Sit down and write me today. That's Jack Coe, Dallas, Texas. That's easy to remember, isn't it? And then to every one of you that write me, I'm going to send you a free book that I've wrote myself. Will thou be made whole? This is a healing instruction book that tells you how you can be healed by the power of God. I know to a lot of you this is a strange program because you've never seen it on this fashion before. But healing is in the Bible. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Write me today and I'll send you the handkerchief that's anointed in the free book on Will Thou Be Made Whole. That's Jack Cole, Dallas, Texas. Until next week at the same time, may the Lord bless you, may his face shine upon you, and may he keep you.